Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright with the next installment of the How to Draw series. A collaborative effort between me and you. And today we're looking at macroeconomics and specifically the Keynes Aggregate Demand Aggregate Supply Diagram, a fascinating diagram. I'm gonna give you a little secret as to how to remember it. So take a look, remember it, study it. Here we go, Keynes Aggregate Supply Aggregate Demand Diagram. All right, well, let's take a look at the Keynesian, Keynesian aggregate supply, aggregate demand diagram for all the information that you would like to see about Keynes and where he came up with this concept. Check out other videos that I have. I have a great video called Understanding the Logic of Keynes or Keynesian Logic Told Through the Story of a Young Couple. Take a look in the, in the, in the upper portion of the screen there. It's a very funny story that I made up about my sister and her husband, <laughs> but it actually explains the whole logic behind Keynes. But in this particular um, uh, video, we're focusing how to draw it, okay? So let's take a look, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a little, a little helpful tool to, in order to remember this diagram. But it starts off with just making sure that you have the same axes as you would um, for the neoclassical model or um, the classical version of the aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram. And that would mean average price level with a dollar sign, with zero or any currency, by the way, zero real GDP. If this is output, that is fine. You're going to have figure one, the economy of Chile. And then for Keynes, here's the part that gets exciting because you're going to draw the same aggregate demand diagram or rather aggregate demand curve right there, okay? So you start off drawing that, which is, of course, going to be AD1, okay? But then Keynes had this idea that there was no such thing as the long run. And he actually has a very famous quote that says, in the end, we're all dead. In the long run, we're all dead. Okay, so what he did is he actually took the neoclassical model and of a, the notion of a long run and a short run um, aggregate supply curve and combine them into one curve, okay? So the way that that would look and the way that you draw that is quite intriguing, and maybe you've seen this in your textbook, but the way that looks is you start off, it's perfectly elastic, and then it moves up to a point where it's perfectly inelastic. And that is simply called AS, aggregate supply, okay? That's the Keynesian model right there. Make sure you always label that. Um, at AS1 and AD2, AD1, okay? The reason you always want to have AD1 there and AS1 there is that in case one of these shifts, right, you have an idea, um, you, you, you already are prepared to have AD2 or AS2. Okay, so let me clean that up a little bit. So there it is, looking all nice, right? You got AS1 up there, AD1 down here. You got the economy of Chile. You got real GDP, zero average price level, um, you got a currency there I forgot to add, so I'll do it right now. This should be P1 right there, and this is going to be Q1. And there you have it. That is the base diagram for the Keynesian macroeconomic diagram, okay? That is it. This is where, if you go with the Keynes model, this is where the story begins, I'm not going to get into this diagram or into this in this video about why it is he thought that. Check out some other videos out there or check your textbook to understand Keynes's thought. But this is the Keynesian model. And in order to help you remember that, I have developed this little device like I did um, for the how to draw demand and supply diagram. If you don't know that for microeconomics, that is a critical piece of your understanding of microeconomics. If you're in macroeconomics, you already know that. Um, but check out the video listed up above for that. And the other diagram, which is, of course, critical to your studies of macroeconomics, right, is the other base diagram, the diagram that is the other competing philosophy, sort of, for um, how to understand a macro economy. And that is um, my video called How to Draw the Aggregate Demand and Aggregate Supply Diagram or Aggregate Supply and Aggregate Demand Diagram. Take a look at that as well so that you have a nice reference point for all of these things. Now, how are you going to remember Keynes? Well, here's a little secret I referred to in the beginning of the video. You're going to count up these components. If you're asked a question in the Keynesian model, you have to realize like this is the beginning of the story, right? I say this with all my videos. Listen, this is super important. Listen, what's the beginning of the story? When you get a problem in any sort of economic 
um, exam or test or even like a problem set in class, there's going to be the, 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 the beginning and then there's going to be the event, right? So if you're asked for Keynes, you are going to draw this diagram using the Keynesian model, express what would happen if there were a decrease in aggregate demand, you know, some question like that. Well, where does that story begin? It's so easy for students to get caught up in that, you know, a decrease in aggregate demand part and not draw the diagram first. So my suggestion is you see in that question, using the Keynesian model, stop the presses. Don't read the rest of the question. Draw this diagram. Because this diagram needs to be perfect in order for you to get to what happens if there's a decrease in aggregate demand, right? So what is this little device? It's super complicated. You got to count, but this time you're only going to count to nine. It's called the Keynesian rule of nine. And what are the nine components? Average price level, one. Currency, two. P1, three. Zero, the origin. Don't forget it. I always do. Four. Q1, five. Real GDP, six. AD1, 7, AS1, 8, and the last one, what is it? Wait a minute. Of course, it's the title, okay? Always label that figure one, because if you have to draw another diagram, you can just say figure two, and in your writing, you can just say figure one, figure two. If you never draw another diagram, and that's called figure one, who cares, right? Make it about the economy of a particular country. I live in Chile, so I chose Chile, okay? So that's it. Wow, check it. That is the Keynesian rule. Oh, wrong pen. The Keynesian Rule of rule. <laughs> that looks terrible. Nine, okay? That, believe it or not, says Keynesian rule of nine. That is the device for you to understand. That looks awful. That's hilarious. Um, my stylist theory here isn't, isn't working very well. Um, that is your device, the Keynesian rule of nine. So now you actually have a way of making sure you draw this diagram perfectly every single time you sit down to do so because you know very well that in economics, if the diagram's wrong, everything else falls apart after that. So this is the base diagram for Keynes and make sure you practice, practice, practice. As Alan Iverson once said, you talking about practice? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about practice. We're not talking about the test. We're not talking about the game. We're talking about practice. And here's what you need to practice for any question you might get regarding Keynesian economic thought. Well, there you have it, my friends. The Keynes Aggregate Supply, Aggregate Demand Diagram, a fascinating diagram. John Maynard Keynes was an incredible thinker. He took the whole economic paradigm and shifted it in the 1930s. I hope you found that video to be helpful. Remember, this is the How to Draw series, a collaborative effort between me and you. If there are any diagrams that you would like me to cover in this series, please put them in the comments below. I read all of the comments that come into my channel. Also, let's make sure we stay in contact with one another. So please be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so that anything new posted in this um, channel will get to your little phone and get to your uh, email. Good deal, my friends. Be good out there. Take care of one, one another, and we'll talk to you in a bit.